Hello and welcome to my channel. I haven't done these colored pencil portraits in a while, so I'm going to do this portrait of Kevin Klein as Le Tessier in the movie French Kiss. Let's go. The drawing materials, the tools are as usual Faber Castell Polychromos colored pencils on a 1000 grit sandpaper. As for my reference, you can see it in the top left corner. I worked off of this black and white photo, that was the one that I liked, so I had to improvise a little bit with the colors, which is maybe a good thing because uh, it gave me an opportunity to be creative with the colors a little bit. For the background I decided to go for a slightly grayish background with some bluish tones. Initially I wanted it to be a little more grayish, but then eventually as you will see I started adding more and more of the bluish tones. I started with a light cool grey and then I added some uh, light ultramarine on top. I tried some other blues as well. When I started blending with a brush it was getting a little bit greyish. I felt like it needed a bit more colour maybe so that it would uh, complement the colours uh, which I was about to use on, on the main subject a little bit better. So I added some more of that light ultramarine and when I was happy with the color I was, uh, I was achieving I just kept layering with my pencils and blending with a brush. Blending with a brush works on this surface as long as you put down enough material, as long as you put down enough pigment. Because when you blend it with, with a brush what can happen is that you can sometimes um, reveal a little bit too much of the background color of the paper, which in my case here is uh, a bit too dull and a bit too dark, which is not exactly what I wanted. So this was the background color that I, that I was going to go for. And after that I started working on the main subject and I started working on his hair. I started with some browns. Uh, I started with a walnut brown because that was going to be my base color, as it were. But you'll see that soon enough I will put some lighter colors on top of that, especially on the left side. Because as you will see, the left side of the hair and the main subject's head will be considerably lighter than the right side. That's because our light source is coming from the left. So the right side is the shadow side. Now for these lighter hairs or highlights in the hair, I used a couple of different colors. I first added a touch of raw umber to add more of a yellowish brown component first and then I put some cinnamon and even some light beige on top for some of the lightest uh, lightest strands of hair. Now for the darkest uh, bits which are closer to the head, closer to the scalp, I added some darker colors like a, um, dark sepia and even a touch of black colored pencil. Here at the top his hair is kind of swept back, so I have to try to imitate uh, that um, texture and that flow of the hair, so you can see how I'm pulling my strokes in that direction. And I'm kind of, as I have uh, first laid down the first layer of the walnut brown, I'm working on top of that uh, with some lighter pencils, kind of trying to go in between them to keep uh, that direction of the hair, not to lose all those uh, pencil strokes which I initially laid down. Uh, so I'm trying to imitate the, the texture of the hair and the way it is styled. And here as you can see I'm adding more and more brown and even a little bit more black to the right because there's going to be a little, more, a little bit more shadow to those uh, long bangs which are kind of uh, just uh, swept to the side and a little bit more shadow here at the roots for which I'm using a uh, dark sepia. A dark sepia that I'm using is uh, duller and darker than the walnut brown I used initially. It's kind of like a, a really dark brown I suppose. Now for the highlights here on the top I'm again using a cinnamon colored pencil which has a bit more of a, uh, how should I describe it, mm, salmon-y type of color 
and uh, it goes well with this brown here because uh, what you can do on this surface is you can uh, allow your, your layers to blend because the colored pencils actually do blend on this surface on regular paper not so much because on regular paper you kind of have to layer and create an illusion like the colors are blending but here because the textured rough surface of the paper grinds down on the pencil uh, you can actually blend the pigment, you can actually blend the material to create some new colors, uh, new combinations of colors. And another thing that you can do with the surface is you can control, with the amount of pressure, you can control what you can do when you're layering. You can uh, draw some very clean lines like what I'm doing here at the top to pull these highlights, or you can just gently graze over some darker areas and allow the colors to kind of blend a little bit, allowing a little bit more of the background color to break through. Once again, my light source is on the left, so you can see how I've already established that contrast between the light side and the shadow side by making the right side of the hair considerably darker than the left. And I'm starting to work on the face here. I'm going to do a little bit of experimenting uh, with a variety of colors because um, initially I wasn't really sure which colors to go with. Uh, I wanted to start with some slightly warmer tones but I ended up using a lot of the cinnamon colored pencil which I like to use uh, when I draw skin tones. I also used a little bit of this pinkish uh, uh, color uh, for when I was creating the base color of the skin but right now as you can see uh, this forehead area looks a little bit too dark that's because I still haven't drawn these highlights or rather the light side of the head and you can see that I'm starting to work on that now by uh, shading the left side of the forehead which is going to be the light side for that I'm using the light beige colored pencil which I like to use for, for the lightest bits uh, of the face in many of my portraits. Uh, the color is a little bit duller than the colors I used so far but when I put it on top of these warmer colors I think it works and I can always go back and add, uh, add some slightly darker or so slight, uh, some slightly warmer colors on top. Of course I do a little bit of blending with a brush as well, but I try to limit that, uh, limit that because that can, uh, like I said, that can reveal a little bit too much of the background color, making the skin tone a bit too dull. So even when I do a bit of blending, I like to go back in with some slightly uh, warmer, livelier colors to make the skin tone a little bit more realistic. And uh, while I'm doing this, you can see that most of the time I'm trying to keep my pencils fairly sharp and to shade using mostly cross hatching and a one directional tapered stroke rather than just uh, dragging the pencil back and forth. Cross hatching is very important because it allows you to add uh, not only um, values, lighter and darker values on top of the layers you've already established but it also add, allows you to add some new colors on top uh, creating uh, creating new colors in the process and making uh, different parts of the face lighter or darker as needed. Now here I'm starting to work on the eyes and one of the things that I liked about this reference which is why I picked it even though I had a couple of <coughs> uh, colored photos available. The reason why I picked uh, this one, I, uh, I really like the way he's kind of looking to the side in a suspicious manner, because he, um, Lee Tessier, the character that, uh, that Kevin Klein portrays in this movie, is kind of a rascally, shady character. And uh, I thought that this particular choice of a photo kind of reflects his personality and it's a it's a great uh, comedy or a romantic uh, comedy if you haven't seen it you probably should and his partner in the in this movie is Meg Ryan 
so most of the movie takes place in Paris or in France I suppose so I'm making some more progress uh, with the shading of the face so now I'm gonna add a few a few of these smaller details because it's a good idea to shade the larger areas first establishing establishing the values and then you can maybe go into these smaller finer details like these wrinkles on the forehead area and I can also make some adjustments to the eyebrows adding some hairs here and there and for some of the very lightest portions of the face because that part of the forehead and the cheekbone area is kind of facing the light source I even added a touch of ivory colored pencil which is way lighter than anything I've used for the skin tone so far so that's just so that I could maybe push that range of value even further and increase the contrast between the light side and the shadow side because I think it is this contrast between the light side and the shadow side that gives the viewer the idea about the shape and the volume of the head as well as the direction of the light source. Here I'm working on the mustache. Uh, I used a combination of brown and black colored pencil and his mustache and uh, he's a very interesting character in this movie. His mustache uh, in this movie is almost um, <clears throat> grotesquely <laughs> uh, bushy, uh, are almost grotesquely bushy with the uh, messy unkempt hair <clears throat> so uh, I really I, I really wanted to do this particular uh, I, I wanted to do the, uh, a drawing of Kevin Klein as this particular character because I, I thought that it was probably one of the most interesting characters he's ever portrayed uh, probably because uh, he looks and behaves uh, so differently uh, than the actor himself. So here I, exp I experimented with a few greens for the shirt. I only drew the color of the uh, the color of the shirt uh, shirt so far, and uh, I'm moving on uh, with the rest of the face here. And you can see how. I'm always trying to stay consistent with the light source here and there adding a few lighter touches on the parts of the face which are facing left which are facing the light source and I'm moving on to the other eye now this one is going to appear considerably darker for a while until I uh, shade it properly uh, but eventually I hope that it'll make sense uh, meaning that it the, the, the face won't look too, too asymmetrical because that, that, that's what the contrast between the light side and the shadow side can sometimes do it can sometimes make it difficult to explain to the viewer uh, that you know <laughs> uh, this is still the, the the left eye and the right eye are still fairly similar because it's the same person but the only reason that it appears so different is because of the shadows as so you need to stay consistent uh, with all those shadows on the shadow side of the face so that these differences uh, between the eyes and some other parts of the body would actually make sense to the viewer right now like I said it's still a work in progress as you can see because I need I still need to work around the eye I need to shade around it I need to uh, shade the eyeball properly and also another thing uh, that's different here is that the uh, catch lights in the in the eye on the right are more subdued than the catch light on the left there's a nice catch light on the left which is facing the light source here on the right side uh, not so much that's all a little bit darker because it's in the shadow uh, but like i said uh, by shading the entire area consistently it will start to make more sense and it will uh, you will be able to capture the likeness of the person doing a little bit more work on the shirt now uh, I'm not entirely sure what the color of the shirt was in the movie I think it was either a dull bluish green or dun, dull 
greenish gray but I'm pretty sure it had a greenish component to it so I went I just went th with this dark green and added a little bit of uh, warm gray and some black to it for, for the shadow areas moving on to the uh, right side of the face and making sure that the cheekbone area stands out because that's the part of the face uh, which is uh, protruding and has to be a little bit lighter. It's the same thing with the nose, but here only the left side of the nose is going to be catching more light, uh, whereas uh, the rest of it is going to be facing away. It's going to be in the shadow. Now on this forehead area, I want to make this eyebrow area, the, the eyebrow ridge, if you will, I want to make it stand out a little bit more. So I added a bit more of that lighter colored pencil uh, so that it would feel like it's protruding a little bit more and I shaded the transition area between the between the eyebrows and the nose. I, I shaded that a little bit more to make it a bit darker. Uh, just adding some uh, final touches to the nose because the tip of the nose is also protruding and it's also a round area so there's, there's going to be some smaller highlights there as well but obviously they're going to be a little bit more subdued than uh, the uh, the forehead area uh, highlights or the catch lights in the eye which are particularly bright so uh, i i've already established some contrast between the upper part of the face and the lower part of the face not just between the left side and the right side and you can see now how the forehead area and the cheekbone area is really starting to stand out because uh, you, the viewer can now really discern the topography of the face as you can almost feel like the uh, eye socket area is a little bit deeper and a little bit more in the shadow the eyebrow area is protruding a little bit the nose the cheekbone are, the cheekbones are also protruding a little bit and i'm just shading this uh, area under the lower lip, under the chin and the jaw, all of these areas which need to be a bit darker. Of course there's a considerable amount of this uh, short hair to be added here, this stubble uh, on his uh, beard because uh, he has a kind of messy manly uh, stubble and uh, drawing this actually takes a little bit of time because you have to make a lot of these short marks that's an, another interesting thing uh, when you're drawing short beard and short hair that's usually more time consuming than drawing longer hair or longer beard because when you're drawing longer hair it's easier for you to create that illusion of volume but when you're drawing this short stubble or short hair you actually have to draw almost every single hair by drawing a whole bunch of these dots and very short marks so there's no way around it you have to make that look realistic by putting in a little bit more work and being a bit more patient in terms of the likeness i think the portrait is coming along nicely but i still have to do a lot more shading on the neck area and uh, maybe a few more touches on the right side of the hair I do have a nice contrast between the light side and the shadow side of the face and that was after all my main goal. Here around the shoulder area I just added a little bit more of this lighter grey so that maybe uh, the entire figure, the entire uh, shape of the main subject would stand out a little bit more. And occasionally I'm doing some additional blending on the background just so the background, so, so that the background would appear a bit smoother and that there isn't too much texture in it so that it's not too distracting because uh, obviously I want the uh, I want whatever it is, whatever is in the background to be out of focus and I want the focus to be on the main subject there's a nice little bit of shadow here uh, coming from the collar uh, on the neck here so I put that in using a brown colored pencil and then some more of these short hairs uh, for the uh, for the stubble on the neck and the throat area and a bit more shading on the uh, on the area under the chin because that's where there's going to be a bit more shadow 
the t-shirt that he's wearing under this sh shirt is uh, mostly just dark so that's pretty simple to draw and after that I just need to do a bit more work on the background here because I need to finish that first so that I would do the rest of the hair. Here I added a little bit more grey than I did on the left side so I'm going to keep adding some more blue and keep blending until I get that to look mostly even. And I also added a bit more grey on the left side as well just to achieve a bit more balance and a bit more contrast with the shoulder area perhaps. And this whole thing needed a bit more blending because sometimes it can be difficult to completely remove that um, texture when shading larger areas with a colored pencil. Colored pencils obviously behave a lot differently than pastel pencils so it can be difficult to shade these larger areas especially when you want to achieve smooth gradients, smooth transitions, but it can be done I suppose. Uh, here on the left side I felt that his shoulders were a little bit too narrow so I added a bit more on the left side and I'm just putting down some finishing touches on the shirt and uh, also cleaning up the edges uh, between the shoulder area and the background so that the main subject uh, so that the main subject would stand out against the background I'm going to put my signature here on the left side above his right shoulder I suppose and that's it the drawing is finished another thing that I forgot to do is uh, the ear needed a little bit more work because it was a, a little bit too dull so I added a few lighter details to it and a few final touches here and there so uh, <clears throat> the drawing is now done as you can see I want to remind you to check out my other videos I have plenty of colored pencil portraits but if you don't like portraits I have different kinds of drawings if you want to check those out don't forget to subscribe give me a like and comment and if you want to see longer videos and some additional content well then you should check out my Patreon. Anyway that's it for this one. Thanks for watching and I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye.